Hello everyone, my name is Karen Muskelly and I study fossils from the state of Georgia. During the late Cretaceous period, around 80 to around 70 million years ago, South Georgia was actually covered under a shallow sea. In that sea was teeming with life. Things like plesiosaurus, mosasaurus, turtles, and a large variety of invertebrates were living there. Now when you go down to the South Georgia region, at least at places such as Columbus, Georgia, all you ever find are bluffs of those ancient coastlines that existed during the later part of the Cretaceous. And some of the animals that you'll typically find there are things are called invertebrates, animals that are lacking a backbone. And one of the most common fossils you'll be able to find in the late Cretaceous sediments of South Georgia are oyster fossils, such as this. This is an oyster called Exogyra. And Exogyra means twisted shell. And it gets its name from the end of its shell here, which it has a small twist at the end of its shell. And that's where the name Exogyra comes from, means twisted shell. This is a very common Cretaceous fossil that's found in the South Georgia region in the Cretaceous sediments. Exogyra is an oyster that would have lived on the bottom of the seabed. It would have actually been attached to other oysters it would have, or would have been attached to a rock and it would grow upwards. Exogyra is commonly found uh, encrusted with other oysters that were growing on top of it. Or the oyster was actually growing or the Exogyra um, oyster was actually growing on that particular oyster and living its life. It has a very heavy shell, and so, ex and so oysters like these would have lived on the bottom of the sea floor. Now, Exogyra is a late Cretaceous oyster. It's actually a really good index fossil. Some of the last Exogyras we see are from the later part of the Cretaceous. So if you do find a particular Exogyra species, that will let you know that you're probably in the Cretaceous period. We do find an Exogyra species called Exogyra costata, and that is actually the last species of Exogyra to go extinct around the late, later part of the Cretaceous. So during the age of dinosaurs, these were very dominant creatures that would have lived in those ancient seas. Now Exogyra can get quite big. The, one, the example that I showed you is a very small one, but this is a larger one that comes from the Cretaceous rocks of Mississippi. From the Demopolis chalk, it's actually a little bit older um, part of the Cretaceous, and here you can actually see the shell gets very, very large. Exogyra would have had two valves. This is actually known as the right valve, and this is known as the left valve. The left valve is the valve that we pretty much look at and we actually call um, Exogyra. It's the most common fossil you'll typically find, or at least the common part of the shell. And then the smaller shell is known as the right valve, or called the operculum. And so Exogyra would have lived its life on the bottom of the sea floor, and it would open its small lid to feed. And so these were filter feeding creatures. They would have actually had a smaller um, shell for opening and closing its um, opening, closing, opening and closing its shell. It would have had muscles attached, and it would have opened and closed the shell just like this for feeding. Um, for feeding. So this is a very large example of Exogyra. These creatures can get very, very large. Um, Exogyra specimens like these are quite large, and these are not even the largest specimens that I have personally collected and I have actually seen. They get much bigger than this. Um, here's another Exogyra specimen. This one has very um, had a quite of an ornamentation on its shell. Um, this is actually a really good example of us being able to tell what species of Exogyra it belonged to based on the characteristics of its shell. And so this is um, an Exogyra specimen that comes from Lumpkin, Georgia. And, it, and like I said, it has a quite of an interesting ornamentation on its shell. And it's actually also complete. A lot of the Exogyra specimens that you see, like this one, is missing the left, or I'm sorry, is missing the right valve. This one is intact. So you can actually see the left, the right valve is actually connected to the left valve. And so this one is a complete specimen that comes from Lumpkin County, Georgia. So if you do end up going to the Columbus region of Georgia, look for the Cretaceous bluffs. Look, look for some of those Cretaceous exposures. And I guarantee you, you'll probably find these particular fossils because they're probably one of the most common fossils that you'll come across. Other fossils like dinosaurs and maybe turtles and, um, and maybe fish are a little bit um, more rare. But trust me, Exogyra is a very common fossil. And I don't have a doubt that you'll probably come across these fossils if you're in the South Georgia region of region looking for late Cretaceous sediments.